welcome everybody. Welcome to Question and Answers with um, Tim and Andre. And we are looking at, what are we looking at today, Tim? Today we are looking at the question, why are there differences between Bibles? Or what books are in the Bible would perhaps be a better way of phrasing the question. Yeah, so um, we're thinking about which books should be in the Bible and why it is that different traditions have different Bibles. So um, if you, you may not know this, but the Protestant Bible is different to the Catholic Bible, which is different to the Orthodox uh, Bible. And why is that? Isn't, doesn't that make a load of nonsense about the Bible anyway? And so can we still trust the books that are in the Bible? Who's right in this whole debate, Protestants, Catholics, or um, the Eastern Orthodox churches? So I guess the, the big thing to say is um, the Protestant Bible has 66 books and the, the Catholic Bible would have those 66 books, but they also have another seven, I believe, books called the Apocrypha. And so that's where the difference is between the Protestants and Catholics. And that's perhaps, as you know, um, something that would be helpful information. Um, yeah, and it's also, I think, important to, to point out that even though um, it, it is an important difference and it's an important issue to get right, and we believe very strongly in that it matters that uh, we have the right Bible and they don't, and the Protestant view of the Apocrypha has never been, has historically not been negative. You know, the, the apocryphal books, those seven books that Tim was uh, mentioning earlier, um, you know, you go back to the reformers, they had a very high view of the Apocrypha and they read it and they quoted from it and um, they used it in their writings and they encouraged Christians to read it. So it's not like we think it's bad or evil or, or anything like that. Um, and uh, and it, there's absolutely nothing wrong. If you want to go read the Apocrypha, go read the Apocrypha. It, it, it'll, it's good and edifying. The question isn't whether or not it's like good and edifying, like a good Christian book. The question is whether or not it's scripture, God-breathed scripture, the canon that determines the rule of life and faith for the church. Um, and... So in some sense, the, I can recommend to you many good Christian books, um, but I'm not going to say that you equate them with the Bible or trust them or put yourself under their authority in the same way that you would the Bible. And that's the more or less the Protestant view of the Apocrypha. Uh, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Um, I guess one other thing we should say as we are kind of getting started on this is we're probably not going to go massively deep into this there's um a lot of thought behind it and a lot of um history involved in it and we'll probably just touch the surface uh today right so um maybe just before we do that just a, in a nutshell why it is that protestants and catholics and orthodox all have different bibles um and it basically comes down to two different versions so we're not talking about the new testament just to be clear um, everyone has the same New Testament. We're all agreed on that. And so that's not really the objection. There are, um, there are other writings on, in the New Testament period which weren't included in the New Testament canon. Um, but that's a separate issue really to what we're talking about today. And nobody's really divided on that. Nobody has a difference of opinion on that. We're all agreed on the books of the, the 27 books of the New Testament. Uh, where there is disagreement is on those seven books. Was it nine? Seven? Nine? I think it's seven. I could be wrong. Anyway, those books of the um, of the Old Testament are, are are the issue. That's 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 what we're thinking about. Um, so, in a nutshell, there was the Hebrew uh, text of the Old Testament. And then there was the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament called the Septuagint. And they're both very old. And in fact, we have older copies of the Greek translation than we do of the Hebrew Bible. And so um, they're both strong, valid uh, trans uh, versions of the Old Testament. The New Testament authors quote from 
the Greek translation of the Old Testament um, even more, I think, than they quote from the Hebrew Old Testament. So it's not a bad translation and often was used by New Testament writers. And the problem was that the Septuagint also included the additional books that weren't included in the Hebrew Bible or the Hebrew version of the Old Testament. And of course, it was originally written in Hebrew. And so when they translated it into Greek, they also translated these extra te testamental works that were written between um, the, the closing of the Protestant canon and the beginning of the New Testament. So sort of after Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Malachi, and before Matthew, if that, if that, if that makes it. So written in that kind of, that kind of period. And, um, and the, the translators of the Greek version of the Old uh, Testament included that. And so um, in the church's history, from fairly early on, uh, these were well-circulated, um, important books that were used and considered by some to be scripture from, from fairly early on. Okay, again, sorry, I'm massively oversimplifying. So if you actually know about this stuff, you're probably going to find this a bit frustrating. But I'm just trying to hit the major points here. Um, and so what happened was when the Reformation took place, uh, at that point, there, no one had officially made any kind of decision about the, uh, about the apocryphal books, about the, the deuterocanonical books or the, the books written during the, the extra testamental period. And um, the Catholic Church only made a, 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 an official decision about it after the Reformation at the Council of Trent. Um, the Orthodox Church never made an official decision on it. However, there was a kind of um, a church council, the Council of uh, Carthage, uh, which is about the fourth century, which did make a decision on it, but it wasn't like official for any of the, of the three major traditions. So at the time of the Reformation, this was still very much an open question. Um, what to do about the about the apocrypha? Were they just good Christian literature, good historical biblical, um, not biblical, but historical literature, or was it um, was it scripture? And the reformers went back to the original Jewish Bible, whereas the Roman Catholic Church went back to um, Christian tradition, the Council of Carthage, which did include um, the extra testamental books, the the apocrypha. So in a nutshell, that's where the difference takes place. So the question is who's right? And here's a couple of reasons as to why the um, why we think the Protestants got it right to go back to the Hebrew version rather than to go back to the Septuagint and to follow um, uh, and to follow that path. Uh, here's the first thing that um, the after the about 435 ish that's roughly when the the protestant old testament was you know that was the last bit of writing of it uh, 435 bc and then everything else was written after that but it seems like from fairly early on the stuff that was written after that never enjoyed the same status as the stuff that was written before 435 bc, BC or roundabout there um, so partly because, here's the first argument, the, the Apocrypha itself never uh, seems to refer to itself as not being inspired. That's the first key question. So in, in 1 Maccabees 4, verses 45 to 66, uh, 45 and 46, and chapter 9, verse 27, it alludes to the fact that there were no prophets during that time. It was, and so these are not prophetic writings. And so contrasted with the prophetic writings of, say, Malachi and the whole Old Testament, here are works that are referring to themselves as being written when there was no prophet. Um, and that's a really key difference, because part of the reason we believe the Old Testament is inspired is because it was prophetic literature. Well, I guess um, all of that, like what we would affirm as scripture, i.e. God's word, um, would be prophecy. We'd say all the books of the Bible, 66, are a form of prophecy. 
Um, maybe not in terms of how some people might initially think of prophecy, but in terms of it's revealed directly from God to the people who wrote it to be shared with us. And so, like you say, if if there's people saying, well, there's no prophecy happening between the Old Testament and the New Testament, then we can't call it God's word. Yeah, exactly right. And it's not only the um, the Apocrypha itself that sort of seems to put the Apocrypha in a, a subordinate category to the rest of of the, the Jewish writings. Um, but actually contemporary sources as well that aren't in the Apocrypha seem to do the same thing. So you've got Josephus who was born just after the death of Christ, who was an historian, um, said that it had not been deemed worthy of equal credit to what, to the rest of, to the Protestant canon. Um, and so to, or to the Jewish, the Hebrew Old Testament, it, it, it just wasn't ever considered to be of the same level. Um, the Babylonian Talmud will say the same thing. It was written during the time when the Holy Spirit had departed from Israel. So there was no spirit, they claimed, it was not a time when the spirit was inspiring prophets or authors or anything like that. And that's key for us. If it's not inspired by the spirit, then no matter how good it is, um, if it's not God breathed, it isn't scripture. Um, and so that's another key consideration. Right. So um, coming on to that, you then get obviously the next bit of things. So first of all, it's um, the Apocrypha itself refers to it as subordinate material, not on the same level. Uh, contemporary Jewish sources seem to think of it that way. Uh, the New Testament authors, here's the third thing, the New Testament authors never quote from or cite the Apocrypha. Now, that's not, you know, there are, there are books in the Old Testament canon that the New Testament authors don't cite from or quote either. It's not to say that, that ha they have to cite from something in order to make it scripture. It's just to say that if it was scripture, they did cite from scripture a lot. And so it's just bizarre that they never quote from any of the Apocrypha at all. You know, I think you would expect some references there. They quote from all sorts of sources, biblical sources and non-biblical sources, but they never quote um, from the Apocrypha um, at all, and especially not in the same way that they do from Scripture, where they say, thus says the Lord, or it, it, as it is written, or, or something like that. Um, so uh, that's another key thing. We just think that it, had the New Testament authors quoted from or cited the Apocrypha in any way, that would have changed things quite quite radically, but it, it doesn't, um, especially if they cited from the Apocrypha saying, thus says the Lord, or as it was written. Yeah, and uh, I guess just to explain that a little bit further, when someone says, thus says the Lord, or as it was written, they are kind of putting the weight on, well, this is God's words, this is direct message from him that we should listen to and take seriously. And as you say, they, they never do that. But not only do they never do that, they never refer to it at all, which I guess, you know, if, if it were God's inspired word, um, nothing from that period has been quoted as that or referenced and kind of seems a little bit strange. So the writings themselves don't think of themselves as scripture. The contemporary Jewish sources don't think of them as scripture. Um, the New Testament authors apparently don't seem to think of them as scripture. Um, and the earliest Christian sources don't reference them as scripture either. So this is important because the, the, the Christian tradition does eventually begin to regard them more and more highly. And so by the time you get to the fourth century, it was generally agreed at a local council that it was scripture by early Christians. But, you know, that's a lot of time passing between the first century and the fourth century. And with the, and the, the closer you go back to the first century, the more ambiguous it becomes or the more, um, uh, you know, the, the tradition is divided on what Christians think about it. And even going through into medieval times, the tradition and, and the opinion of Christians 
was divided on it. It just has never been a sure deal at all. Um, however, the books in the Protestant Bible have always been regarded without conflict as being biblical. And so I think that is a key consideration to make. So even when you get into Christian history and into the tradition of the church, the earlier you go, the, the less confidence in the Apocrypha you see. But the later you go, the more that confidence grows, which is why um, in orthodoxy, where uh, Christians place a lot of emphasis on the tradition of the church, there's a greater inclination to accept books, even that the Roman Catholics don't accept. Uh, and, and so the same with Roman Catholicism. But Protestants had a different concern. Their concern was uh, they didn't equate tradition, sacred tradition and sacred scripture. S sacred scripture was above tradition. And so they weren't concerned about the tradition of the church. They were concerned to discover which books were genuinely God breathed, with which books were scripture, and and with with absolute certainty. And the only ones you could know with certainty were God breathed, were the ones in the Hebrew Bible, which is why they went back there. Um, right. So all of this, in a nutshell, then, is to say one main reason why the Protestant reformers did not accept the apocrypha is because they did not believe that it was the Bible that Jesus used. Now, it's hard to show this definitively. Like I've said before, there is all sorts of things you want to say about a statement like that, but based on these reasons and more, um, it's, it's very likely that given that Jesus never objected to questions about the canon, even though there were debates about, uh, about the, uh, the canon, Jesus never has anything to say about it. Um, and it's very likely, so he accepted the Old Testament canon that he had, and all of the evidence seems to suggest that what he referred to by the canon was the, was the same Bible that we now have in our Bibles. Um, whereas all of the books in Roman Catholic Bibles or in Eastern Orthodox Bibles, um, there's a lot of doubt as to whether Jesus would have had that in his mind when he spoke about the scriptures. And this is fundamental for the reformers. How do we know whether or not we can trust the Old Testament? Uh, and the, the ultimate answer to that is not because of any archaeological findings, though there are many, or any scholarly uh, theories, though there are many, but because of one simple truth. If Jesus regarded the Old Testament as scripture, we should regard it as Old Testament scripture as well. He knew more about it than us. And the Bible he regarded as scripture was the Bible that we have in our Bibles as Protestants, the 66 books of the Old Testament, no, the 39 books of the Old Testament. <laughs> I almost added a lot more. Um, yeah, the 39 books of the Old Testament. Yep. So apart from some sketchy maths, um, <laughs> then yeah, this is, I mean, this is it. Like you say, if Jesus affirms it, then as Christians, we should affirm it. If Jesus doesn't affirm it, well, we have no reason to either. And, and that's the, the real kind of crux of it. And yeah, interestingly that we see, you know, like I know you said, obviously there's no real discrepancy about what's in the New Testament, but we also see Jesus affirms that the apostles are going to write things. And so that's, you know, clear that Jesus affirms the Old Testament that we have, and he also affirms the New Testament that we have as well. And so that's why we can have confidence in the, the 66 books of the Bible in a nutshell. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure you can see that it's quite a complicated question, but um, a really, really important one. If we're going to base our confidence in the Bible, we do need to know what Bible we're talking about. Please let us know in the comments or send us a message if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like us to speak any more on this or go into more detail, um, or if you have a particular question about about the Bible you want us to ask. But other than that, we'll continue to crack on answering your questions. And so we'll see you again next week. Yep, see you guys later.